Hello and welcome everybody to this new uh, Excel platform webinar. Uh, I see that uh, we have quite a few attendees with us today. I really uh, appreciate your joining us uh, for this live exploration of the new major release by Excel. Before we start, uh, it'd be great if one of you guys could let me know if you can uh, hear me well, if you can see my screen. Uh, just please write me in the questions panel uh, in the GoToWebinar tool. Uh, once I have your go, we can go ahead and get started. All right, great. Thank you, guys. So let's uh, let's start. So thanks again for your attendance. I'm Marwan. I'm uh, going to be your host today for uh, a one hour long webinar in which I will have the pleasure of uh, introducing you to uh, the new major version six of Excel platform uh, that we just released. And I'll be walking you through its main uh, features, main improvements and changes. So um, here you can see how I plan to, to do this. Uh, we'll start with just a very quick intro of Exo and the Exo platform uh, for newcomers who are not familiar with it. Uh, after which we will dive into this new release uh, where I will be uh, presenting and demonstrating whatever possible uh, the new features of this new version six. Um, I'll also take a couple of minutes to give you a sneak peek into our roadmap uh, of future improvements, uh, anything scheduled uh, for next year. And finally, I will address any questions about uh, this new version that uh, you guys may have. So uh, for that, you can write me at any time in the questions panel. Uh, just drop your questions as we go through this, uh, through this webinar. And uh, I'll uh, look into and I will address all questions by the end. Um, a quick disclaimer before we start, just to let you guys know that this session will be recorded. It is being recorded uh, in video format and uh, it will be shared publicly on the internet and sent out by email to people who missed the, uh, uh, who will be, uh, who will have missed the, the webinar. So for your convenience, I'll be sure to maintain anonymity of your questions and interventions uh, during this webinar. All right, let's get started. Uh, just a quick word on Excel before we start for those who don't know us yet. So Excel is a software editor company uh, founded in 2003. Uh, it was founded in uh, San Francisco, uh, where we have an office today. Uh, although today we are headquartered in, in Paris, primarily in Europe. Um, so we have four offices around the, 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 uh, the globe. Uh, one in San Francisco, one in Paris, one in uh, Tunisia and North Africa, and one in uh, Belgium. And we employ uh, around 80 employees in these four uh, countries. And uh, in terms of our ecosystem, we have over 100,000 uh, community members in our online community. Uh, today, we lead the Open Source Needs Association, which represents uh, the uh, open source core of Excel platform today. Uh, uh, and uh, we are uh, trusted uh, by several organizations in different uh, sectors of activity, uh, such as the public government sector, uh, private sector, uh, such as finance, banking, um, and so forth. So uh, just a quick word uh, on Excel platform. So Excel platform is uh, the software that uh, Excel, the company, edited. So we added one software called Excel platform. Uh, and uh, as you guys know, we're living in a world where uh, more and more people are working digitally, working uh, remotely, collaborating and com communicating within uh, the digital sphere of their company or organization and what is now commonly called the digital workspace. And so uh, people or companies are doing this either spontaneously today or due to evolving corporate and digital cultures. Um, and the increasing use of digital uh, digital tools for work, or sometimes due to unpredictable circumstances like the current pandemic uh, and the way it forced people to work from home and rely on uh, digital work tools. So we're in a situation where digital work tools are no longer a nice to have, but a, but a must have for companies and organizations. And we think it's only going to continue to, to be with this way and to, um, 
uh, increasingly be more and more critical uh, to embrace the use of uh, uh, digital workspace uh, solutions. And so we see this, uh, we see it as our mission to offer the world our take on what would be a great solution for providing employees with these tools and or having uh, a nice wrapper or hub for their existing work tools, uh, their existing work communications, their existing uh, uh, work content, information base. Uh, and we do this through ExoPath, the digital works, workplace solution platform that uh, today rests upon these four pillars that you see on my screen and uh, that I think represent well the types of features that uh, we focus on offering uh, natively within uh, the platform today. So in terms of competitive advantages that we uh, that kind of represent our differentiators uh, in the market today, I think we can uh, safely say that the primary thing that we focus on providing is a user-centric experience. So when you work with us today, uh, you can expect to, that we want to be working on building a content portal or a business app portal or an integration project. Instead, we'll be working on a user experience. And of course, these aspects uh, that I mentioned can be part of it, but uh, it's all driven by user experience because uh, we really think that's uh, the, the main added value uh, of what's happening today. We have uh, many clients that already rely on uh, collaboration software suites such as uh, Office 365 or Google Suite. Um, but uh, putting the pieces together and building a user experience uh, around those uh, existing apps and existing practices uh, that will ensure user adoption and ensure that users can navigate their company's apps, information, and interactions uh, in a way that's um, accessible to them, in a way that makes sense to them, uh, and that keeps them engaged. Uh, other competitive advantages uh, include the fact that this is based on uh, standard open source technology to maximize flexibility and security and to give our clients, uh, such as our public sector and government clients, an open source alternative to proprietary vendor ecosystems, at least when it comes to their digital workplace platforms, which uh, usually is a rather important and strategic piece of an organization's IT infrastructure. So um, with that said, um, let's uh, dive into Exo Platform uh, version six, uh, which uh, on behalf of the Exo team, I am very happy and excited to present it to you. Uh, it's a new major release, it's a major version, and it's uh, the start of a new major version stream, which is uh, 6. So this is 6.0. Uh, so the upcoming minor versions will be 6.1, 6.2, etc. Um, so today we'll be, this is the main focus of uh, today's webinar, and I'll be uh, going through the uh, new features and new improvements and changes within this uh, new version release. One by one, I'll uh, explain what we added, what we changed, and I'll try to demo uh, these uh, improvements and these new features for you guys. So the first thing that changed is uh, that we have a new portal site, a new default portal site that you'll find in an Excel platform called Digital Workspace, which will replace the, the old portal site, which by default is called Intranet. So what I mean by this is when you, when you install Exo Platform, and actually I'll uh, switch over to my web browser. Uh, when you install Exo Platform and you access your Exo Platform site, you land on um, a site called Intranet. And uh, it's a, a site that's created by default within your, your Exo Platform uh, installation. Um, so we replaced that with a new site called Digital Workplace, which uh, has a new homepage, a new navigation, uh, and so on. And uh, so what happens now is when you, as soon as you access that extra platform site, instead of seeing slash portal slash uh, intranet, you will now see slash portal slash DW, uh, digital workplace. Uh, we still, we would we keep um, the intranet site. Uh, if you, for example, if you, you're an existing user of Exo Platform and you already have an intranet site. Um, based on the old intranet portal, if you go, just go to slash intranet, you will still see 
particular site, so it won't be affected. But uh, the idea behind keeping it, uh, keeping the old portal, is to um, lay the foundation for a smooth transition to the new improved uh, portal. Okay, so what you see now is a slash intranet portal. So let's go back to BW. So now I'll uh, I'll explain to you. I'll start by explaining what changed in this uh, in this new portal and what it has to offer. So okay. So the first thing you probably noticed uh, uh, is the new homepage, right? So um, this new homepage provides uh, a snapshot to the user of the recent uh, publications in terms of announcements, articles, any top-down corporate communications, um, in this case represented by this uh, uh, top uh, banner um, image slider. Also this latest news section, which shows me the latest articles published uh, using the new uh, news feature, which uh, uh, will be showing you today. It also gives me uh, sort of a, a a personalized dashboard that uh, will summarize my activity. So I see welcome message here, for example, welcome back, John. I'm signed in as a user called John, who, by the way, represents an admin uh, account. So I see welcome back, John. Uh, here I can click on uh, my weekly points, for example, uh, the number of points, uh, activity points I accumulated uh, thanks to the gamification system, which uh, attributes points to users based on their activity within, uh, within the site. And I can see in which domains uh, I'm most active as John. My weekly ranking in terms of the, uh, my activity level. So we rank the users also thanks to the gamification system uh, within sort of a leaderboard. And I can glance at my current ranking. Uh, right now as John, I'm the most active a person in the site, so number one, um, this week at least. So um, other than that, if I keep scrolling, we see this little dashboard. Uh, we see popular spaces, interesting spaces, uh, active spaces within the, uh, the platform that are open that uh, might be interested in joining, for example. I see uh, uh, an area where I would see any ongoing uh, current tasks assigned to me as John. I see documents, so uh, documents I am currently working on. I see documents I have bookmarked, my favorites, uh, documents shared with me, um, and I can explore interesting documents that people, other people are working on. So just a widget uh, for glancing at document-related activity. Um, of course, as always, this page can be personalized. Uh, we moved the uh, editor menu here, so uh, as an admin, now, if I need to edit the, uh, the site layout or the page layout, page content, I just click here and I get this drawer. And this is where I can activate the inline editing or edit, change the, the layout of my page, in this case, my homepage. So you can adapt this homepage uh, to your specific needs uh, in terms of what you want to display, uh, content, widgets, apps, and so forth. Uh, so the next change that uh, we can take a look at uh, is uh, the new site navigation menu. So um, here, uh, if I need to access the navigation of the site, uh, I just click here, and this is where we see the navigation menu. So in the navigation menu, we see, uh, of course, the links to the main pages of my site, uh, like in the, in the old navigation. So here we have the snapshot page or homepage, and then we have the stream. So uh, if I click on stream, here we see uh, the social activity stream that you guys probably know uh, that used to be by default on the homepage. So uh, it's a Facebook-like or LinkedIn-like stream that aggregates activity uh, in different spaces in different areas, uh, activity of people I'm following, uh, things like that. So, uh, and I can interact with these activities with uh, comments, uh, with likes, and also with kudos, uh, this is a new feature that allows us to uh, thank or recognize people uh, within uh, the organization. So um, this is a stream page, right? So the user will come here and see uh, his, the latest activity coming from his or her network, uh, his or her spaces that uh, uh, he or she is a member of, suggestions, things like that. I have, also have some widgets here. Uh, and so now we have a 
distinction between a corporate uh, home page or snapshot page that uh, groups the latest announcements, the latest corporate communications, news, important things that everybody needs to see, um, widgets, uh, personalized widgets, and the screen page. Okay, so now we have split the two and we have two pages home page and screen page. Of course, uh, nothing um, uh, prevents an admin from uh, deciding, uh, okay, we or, or a company, they might decide, okay, we, we want to, to keep the screen page on the home page. Let's say it works for us, so we want to put it here. Uh, we can do that thanks to the uh, page editor. Um, another cool feature that we added is the, uh, the ability for end users to change their landing page, change their home page. And so by default, everybody will land on the home page, the snapshot page that you see here. But if I switch over to another user like Mary, maybe as, as Mary, uh, I really like the, the screen page. It's what I want to glance at every time uh, I come here to the site to check out my latest activities. And I want, to, I want it to be my home page. So I can come here and I can point on the stream page and click on this button. And it'll ask me to confirm, uh, would you like to change homepage link to current site, uh, current site to streams? And I'll click OK. And as soon as we do that, now uh, every time I access the site with, using its URL, I land on the screen page. Or if I click on the logo from here, which uh, by default takes you to your homepage, I land on the stream page. Um, Likewise, some people might might be working, for example, in uh, specific departments, and 90% of their activity is focused there. That's where they go most of the time. So maybe as Mary, I'm HR manager. I'm managing the HR department, and it's uh, associated uh, space uh, or sub site called Human Resources. So I want to land here. I want to land on the spaces, uh, the Human Resources space. I just click here and I go to this space and I click on this little button that shows up when I point on my space. And I'll change my homepage to human resources. And now, likewise, every time I click on, I access the, the site, I land on my department's subsite or space. Okay? Good. So uh, I hope that makes sense. So we're, we're, uh, we continue. Uh, to pursue our user-centric uh, design philosophy where we want the, the end user to have uh, the user experience that they expect and to uh, decide what's relevant to them, uh, and what will make their uh, experience smooth um, in, the, in this portal, uh, how can they access their, their things that they need to access on a daily basis to do their jobs, uh, so in, in several areas, we really try to uh, make things user centric. But uh, you know, if um, there's a decision at a you know platform management level or company level that says that we don't we don't want that particular feature or, or possibility, uh, and we want to override it, that that's still that's possible uh, to do. Uh, okay. So let's move on. Uh, next feature is going to be uh, the news feature. And I'm really excited to show this one. Uh, a news module for, um, for administrators, for communications professionals, like internal comms people, um, and other um, managers, like uh, department managers, uh, that will allow them to easily uh, push corporate communications, top-down communications to their teams, to specific audiences or to everybody in the company, depending on their uh, their permission level within the platform, in an easy way, without the need to be trained on a particular CMS. Uh, so let me show you what uh, this feature, uh, what it looks like. So I'm going to, so this feature, like most features of Excel Platform, rely on spaces. And you guys probably know spaces if you're familiar with Excel Platform. It's, um, very important uh, in the way uh, that we structure information within the Excel platform. It relies a lot on this notion of spaces. So you create spaces. These spaces can be um, open company-wide spaces that you will use to um, target uh, all of your company or all of your organization with content, with posts, with news, with documents, with uh, uh, discussions, things like that. 
Uh, so an example of an open company white space is the company news space I have here. Okay, so this is a company white space where everybody is a member and I use it as a manager of the space to push news or push announcements or important company wide documents, things like that. Uh, we can use spaces for specific departments or teams. So you can have like uh, human resources or marketing or sales or IT department or whatever team you have that need to have their own area where they can centralize their uh, important updates, uh, their discussions, their documents, their uh, agendas, their tasks, um, basically um, centralize all of their activity or some of their activity in one location, uh, a team space would be a great way to do it. So we only invite uh, the human resources team to, to the space, for example. Um, so um, we can also use spaces for other purposes, like for example, we can have a space for project. So a project team can, uh, across departmental project uh, can take place and we can use a space for that. Uh, so here, for example, so switch over to the project manager, maybe John, he's managing the website project, for example, for updating our project. And he invited uh, people from marketing, people from different uh, departments, and they can now collaborate and centralize their activity around this project here. Um, so you get the idea, we can use spaces for different things. And we wanted to provide a way for space managers, such as department managers, like human resources department manager, or communications managers, uh, maybe an internal comms person who manages the company news space, give them a way to push news and updates from a space uh, in an easy way. So as you know, uh, when I come here to the activity stream of, uh, of my space, uh, we have the activity composer here that allows me to write a post write a short message in the activity stream of my space. That's still there. When I click on post in company news, we have this new activity composer that looks nicer and is more cleaner and more user friendly. That allows me to write a short message uh, limited to uh, 1,000, 1,300 characters. Useful for uh, doing short messages, uh, quick updates to your teams, uh, especially within projects and things like that. But what about when I need to write a full-fledged news article and then pin it somewhere and display it on the homepage within a dedicated news feed so everybody can see it, uh, display it as a, an image carousel or display it as sort of a news stream or something like that. Well, this is now possible. Uh, so you have to come here and you, if you are a manager in this space or redactor, content uh, editor within space, you will see this button. Regular members of the space that are not a manager of the company news space will not see the write an article button. They won't be able to publish message, publish articles here. So I'm going to click there, and this will display the news editor. A straightforward, uh, no nonsense uh, content editor that allows you to uh, write and format your article. It will ask you for to provide four things: an illustration image, a title, a summary, and your article's body. So let's start with a quick image here. Let's. Uh, Add a quick announcement about um, about Exo Platform new release, for example. Uh, discover the new uh, Exo Platform six release. Okay, so a title and then a summary. So my summary here, which will be part of the, the illustration that will show up uh, on the news feed, as well as the title and the image. And then when people click on the article, they will read the full article. So we need to provide uh, the article here, okay? In the article itself, we can, of course, format our text. We can insert quotes. We can uh, insert bullet points. We can insert links. We can insert images. So if I click on insert image from here, it will ask me to drag and drop my, an image or upload from my computer or select from existing uploads, like browse Excel platform for, uh, for documents like this or uh, we can provide the URL from here. So uh, what I'm going to do, you can also drag and drop it image directly in your article. So for demo's sake, let's do a drag and drop quickly because I want to show you something like this. So maybe I inserted an image and maybe it's, uh, it's too large or too small. I can just do this to change its size like this directly within my article. 
So no need to um, to open a properties window and to change the size of the image from there, etc. So let's remove this image and let's insert something else. So let's try to insert, for example, a YouTube video. That's also a possibility. Um, so one thing you can do is insert um, an online hosted video, like a YouTube Vimeo or Daily Motion video, uh, which will allow you to embed the video within your post um, and make it playable from within your article. So maybe you're doing an article which is going to act as a tutorial, or maybe you want to include a uh, corporate video um, or recording of a meeting or something like that, you can do so. So I'll insert a YouTube video and uh, there you go. It's embedded within my post. Uh, you can also attach files if you click here. It gives you all the options to upload manually, drag and drop. Maybe I've got an MP4 video that I want to upload and include. So I'll just get a, a document or video like this MP4 or maybe a PDF as well like this. So so now we attach a couple of files there. It's saving drafts as I edit my article automatically. So we see drafts here and I can resume work on a, on a draft. And finally, if I'm happy with it, I can post it. But you notice something, one more thing. Uh, you notice this little button that says pin article. When you click there and then you post, it's going to show this confirmation message. This article will be pinned on the snapshot page, on the home page, and made visible to everyone. Okay, do you confirm this action? Now, I need to make something clear. Only content publishers or only users that have the content publisher role within the, the platform, which uh, you, can, uh, you can attribute to any user, such as your uh, communications professionals or specific uh, people that you want to make them able to selectively pin content and articles on the homepage. Once you give them those, uh, that role, they will see the pin button on uh, on uh, news articles. So, and this will this will allow them to pin content, either content that's uh, or articles that are written by other people, or content that they write themselves. So here I'm going to pin this, and I'm going to publish it. So now the article is published by John. Uh, you can see the summary. You can see the article itself. The video we inserted at the bottom. We we'll see the file attachments, and as always interaction and bottom-up communication is important so we see the liking the comments and the kudos so if i switch over to my other user mary so as soon as she uh, accesses the uh, the site he will see the article pinned here it says discover under the uh, latest news section we see discover the new exit back from release when i click on it I see the uh, John's article, I can uh, read it and I can uh, like it. And of course I can uh, react by commenting or kudos. Uh, congrats to the EXO team for this release, etc. So there you go. I left a comment uh, and a kudos. So I also get a notification that, uh, so we can see my notifications, uh, including when John published the article, so I'm informed about that. And I can change my notification settings from here by clicking on notification settings, which will take me to my parameters and my notification settings. So we moved the, the uh, uh, user settings menu to the site menu. So we want the idea is that we want to have one menu that centralizes everything. Uh, so as Mary, if I need to access my profile page, I deal with one menu. I come here and I click here. If I need to browse the site, I come here and I browse the site. If I need to access the space, I come here. I see the spaces here. I see the. I can access the uh, exhaustive list of spaces. I can filter spaces from the sub menu. If I need to go to my settings as a Mary, as a regular user, I go to settings, and this is where I can change uh, language, time zone, notification settings. We have the three notification channels email, mobile push notifications, and all site. And I can go to manage notifications to change the way I'm notified about specific things. Like when somebody posts and use in space, how, how am I informed about that? So by default, 
I make sure everyone gets these notifications, but then they can, if they want to reduce the frequency or the, the channels through which they get not, notified about things, they can do so, right? It's user centric. And people are different and their preferences are different. So, um, all right, well, so if I go back to the homepage as Mary, um, and I click on see all in the latest news section, this will take me to a dedicated page that we have. It's called Newsfeed, and it centralizes all news articles published in different areas from different spaces. So we see John, for example, he published the, uh, the Excel Platform 6 uh, article. We see it here. We see the date and time, the location, which space uh, it was posted from. And we see the views, the number of uh, views it got so far. And of course, I can click on it to read it. Uh, I can filter this list. I can see, uh, I can look for specific news, for example, like this. Or I can filter by source of, or type of news. So show me only HR news or HR and company news. OK, and I can apply this filter. Um, and finally, I can share news. I can reshare news. So maybe this article, OK, so maybe there's this tutorial that was posted uh, a few months ago. And uh, I found it, and it's really cool. It's going to be useful for my team. So I'm going to click on Share. I'm going to share it uh, in my team space, Human Resources. Uh, hi, guys. Um, check out this uh, tutorial posted uh, a few months ago. It's going to be useful. It, it shows how to use the new system, blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to share this uh, with a little message. And that will repost the news in the human resources space. So if I go to human resources, the guys from human resources, so uh, all the folks here will, will get notified and will see this message and this article that was reshared by Mary. Okay, and they can of course interact with it and they can have a, a discussion around it only within the human resources space. It's not, it's not going to be a discussion tied to the comments under the news article itself, which we can see here, okay? Uh, this is a public area. Uh, the news is published publicly. The article is published here. And people can, from around the company, they can discuss about it. But because Mary reshared it inside Human Resources, now her team can discuss privately about this news article within their space, from, from their spaces stream. Uh, let me see if I missed anything or forgot anything about this new feature. Yeah, so if I go back to the administrator or content publisher, who happens to be John in this case, and I'm going to go to the news page by clicking on see all news or going here, which I'll talk about later, this new menu, and going to news. And we've got our news page. So here, uh, an admin or a content manager will see an additional button. Uh, of course, there's a button for editing the news. Like, for example, uh, we have this old article and we want to highlight it on the homepage, so I'll edit this article. Maybe I'm a communications manager who will come here, and I will unpin it or pin it on the homepage. And then I will update. Or maybe I'll do some corrections and update this. But uh, another thing I can do is I can uh, archive articles. So maybe this is an old uh, tutorial that no longer applies to the new system, uh, so we will maybe uh, archive it. So I archive it and I get this confirmation saying that regular members will no longer be able to see it. And you can still unarchive it uh, if you want. So once I archive it, now we start to have news that are moved to the archive. And to see the archive, you just do this. Show me archived articles. Okay. And maybe that was a mistake. So I'll me I will unarchive that. So very simple way to curate news from different uh, departments. Uh, uh, of course, the, the way you manage the rules is also very straightforward. Uh, the rules of who can publish news within your spaces, uh, within your corporate spaces. So uh, let's keep going. Let's move on to the next item. And as a reminder, feel free to write in your questions in the uh, questions area. So now we will talk about the new App Center feature in version six. So the App Center is uh, a new menu and area. The way you access this menu is just go to Excel Platform. 
on any page, you will see it on the top bar, you'll see this new icon. When you click there, you will see this nice My Applications menu. In this menu, we can display links to applications. These applications can be built-in Excel platform applications, such as the Task Manager or the News, or external business applications that you use. So uh, you can, from this menu, you can access the all applications, which will take you to the App Center. And this is the exhaustive list of all apps that you can explore, search, and mark as favorites. Maybe I use the uh, agenda app of Excel platform a lot, and I want to uh, add it to my favorites. I want to bookmark it essentially, so I click here, and it's added to my favorites as John. So now, uh, anytime I need to open the agenda, I go here and I open the agenda app. So what about adding uh, external apps? This is very straightforward and only admins can do this. So as an admin, we go here and by the way, we put the administration menu in the central global menu. So admins can now go here, point in on administration and they have a nicely organized administration menu where they can manage uh, different things, including the app. So let's go to applications. And here I will manage the app center. Here we can add applications. Let's add, maybe our, my company uses Outlook for emails. Um, what's the uh, URL of Outlook? Let me now obtain it. Okay, uh, we will need to provide an icon of Outlook. Let me see if I have one here. And a description, uh, this is our web mail tool, official web mail tool that everybody uses in the company. You can make it mandatory so it appears on every user's app menu by default, and it can't be removed by the user. So you can make it mandatory this way, or you can uh, make it optional if it's an app that's uh, on optional, uh, used within the company uh, optionally. You can choose to display it in the mobile or not. If, for example, you know that there is no mobile version of Outlook, it doesn't make sense to display it in the mobile display because the, especially the new design of this uh, version is very mobile friendly. And, uh, it, uh, we need to make sure what we want to display on mobile uh, and not. So you have this option. So let's display it on mobile. And finally, we can permission this. You can say all users of the platform can see it or only the IT department or human, human resources department uh, because it's an HR tool, doesn't make sense to make it visible on apps on the app center uh, to everybody. So in this case, I'll make everyone, I'll make it visible to everyone. Uh, you can include the help page. Um, if you have, for example, a tutorial or some documentation about Outlook, you can link to it. Or maybe you wrote some guidelines or help resource for this app, you can add it here. And I'm going to save this new app and it's added to the menu. Now, if I switch over to a regular user, Mary, so as Mary, uh, I can go to my apps and I can go to view all applications. And I see there's Outlook. I can uh, bookmark it and add it to my bookmarks. If I need to learn more about it, I can click on this help button to learn more about Outlook. And from now on, I can see uh, Outlook in my apps, okay? I can add another app, like the agenda, and now I see it here. And I can reorganize my apps with drag and drop based on my preferences, Mary. So every time I need to access Outlook, I just click here and I have Outlook, okay? Um, of course, this can sit behind single sign-on system because Excel platform supports that. So we can discuss that. Um, if I need to search for an app, and this is another improvement that we did in version six, uh, we redesigned the search engine. It looks better, it's easier to use, it's, it's more, it's, it's faster, uh, in my experience, it's way faster than it used to be in finding uh, information. So if I click here and I need to find um, Outlook, it shows me results. So it's looking in different areas and uh, activities. And by the way, we now, we now index the activity stream. So we can look inside discussions and posts on the activity stream starting from version six, which is really cool because you no longer lose information that people might, might share in comments uh, when discussing there. 
uh, I can look for applications, I can look for files, nodes, people, uh, products. This is uh, another another feature. Spaces, tasks, and, and uh, anything we uh, integrated to the Axo search engine. Um, and it's it's uh, way faster because it it's now displaying. It's uh, as soon as it finds results in one of these areas, it displays them. It doesn't wait for other results to be found in the other sections. So um, it's uh, the performance has been improved, and the display as well, I think. Um, okay, so let's move on. Redesign profile page. Okay, so if I go to my profile page, as uh, maybe uh, John, by clicking here, we can see that the profile page looks a bit uh, nicer and cleaner. Um, and we can still change our picture, our cover photo of my uh, profile page. We can change um, the About Me section individually. So I can share some information here. Notice the use of drawers. Everything is a drawer. The admin, the edit menu is a drawer. The notification menu is a drawer. The app menu is a drawer. The chat is a nice drawer for the discussions. The message composers are drawers. So we, we're now really unifying our UI vocabulary to make it easier for users to kind of understand this new vocabulary and get used to, uh, to it. Um, and to focus their attention on what they're doing. So uh, in the profile page, we see also the quotas I received or sent per week. Uh, we see the experience section. It's a nice timeline with my latest experiences, and I can add work experiences with skills and job and start dates and so on. The contact area has been improved. We have added new fields, um, such as the uh, location, the department, the team, the profession, the country, the city. Uh, so yeah, so we we really try to make it possible to, for example, uh, allow your employees to uh, indicate their location because we work with many clients that have several locations and they want to bring people together from different locations and they want them to understand who is from where. So this is what we did in terms of the profile page. Now let's talk about the people directory, which has been redesigned as well. Let's go there. And the people directory is where you can find people and you can filter them by position, by job position, by skills, by name and so on. So now it looks like this and you can see additional things like uh, my invitations, suggestions of people to connect with, a leaderboard of the most active members per week, per month or all times. Uh, you can filter by activity domain, like attendance. So right now, Mary comes here often. So in terms of attendance, she's number one. Uh, in terms of social interactions, John is number one. He interacts a lot. In terms of knowledge sharing, in terms of teamwork, or overall, overall, John is uh, currently the most active member. So kind of a leaderboard uh, of members as well. And of course, here you can still filter members, like I said. Uh, same for the space directory. As you noticed, um, it's also redesigned and it looks better. We added sections to show me, for example, a list of spaces I'm managing. Okay, like show me just the spaces that I'm managing and I'm managing three spaces here. Uh, or show me popular spaces, uh, things like that. So also the wizard that allows you to create the space that has been improved um, and made, uh, made simpler. So what else? Um, the next thing I wanted to show you today uh, is the new space navigation. If I go to, for example, to the human resources space, we, the space navigation, which is a top bar, is no longer its own menu. It now it's now integrated within the, the platform top bar. So we try to leverage screen space better. Instead of having a top bar and under it another menu, another top bar, we now have one one top bar that adapts to the page that you are seeing. So now I know I'm in the human resources and this is my navigation uh, and I can navigate the, the space from there. Uh, we also improved the um, management of space members. So if I go to my space members and I want to invite somebody, I'll check and do here. I have to switch to a space that I manage. 
like the company news. So you can invite members or, or other teams uh, to the space by clicking the invite button and uh, indicating the name uh, of the person or of the team that you want to invite. Like I can invite, for example, human resources with one click or a person or several people. Um, another thing is you can, uh, this is where you manage who can redact news in your space. For example, I want to make Mary a redactor. I come here and I can promote her as manager and or set her as redactor, as news redactor in the company news space. So maybe I'm John and I've set up the space, but I want to delegate redaction of news within the space to our internal comms or our HR manager. I just come here and set Mary as redactor within the space, okay? And the next feature is something I've personally been really looking forward to, and I know many of our clients have also been looking forward to uh, having uh, the ability to bind space members to system groups with automated things. So if I go to, um, as an admin, I go to administration and I go to spaces. This is where we can manage spaces. By the way, this is a new improved design, uh, new improved uh, admin interface. You can see all the spaces that are, that are have been created by users, and you can take a space, for example, the human resources space, and you can bind it to a system group, like an active directory, which will synchronize our members of, for example, uh, that group. So, for example, I can add my whole company, my whole organization to this space and bind it to it. And now, if I have someone who retires or leaves the company, they will be automatically uh, removed from the space and by vice versa we have someone who's added to our system group or to our active directory for example uh, they will be automatically added in the spaces where you want to add everyone in the company automatically so very nice and you can even look at uh, binding reports to see the latest operations uh, synchronizations etc how many people were added or removed if someone is automatically removed you will see it here and you can you can export a uh, reports of these uh, of these binding uh, operations uh, and do a search and so on okay so you can show for example uh what has been synchronized uh, the late what, what was the latest synchronization that took place uh, for example when someone left uh, a group or has been promoted to has been moved to a different department etc um all right i hope that makes sense uh this feature has been requested by clients so as you can see we're we're listening um the next um is the next item is the redesigned global search i already showed you this oh there's also the ability to connect uh your microsoft onedrive or google drive documents easily i'll give you i'll show you one use case uh, um i'm part of the human resources team and maybe the human resources team uses google drive okay or Microsoft OneDrive, and that's just what they use. And um, they've created a project for managing the website, and they invited people from other departments. But now, all of a sudden, I need to share files from the Google Drive, uh, my Google Drive, to um, this this project team, okay? Which includes people that don't use Google Drive. So what do I do? I click on Add File when when doing a share. Or when making a post, and I click select from drive. And here we can see my personal drives and Excel platform. We can see space drives and Excel platform. And we see this button that allows me to connect OneDrive or Google Drive. Okay, so if I want to connect OneDrive, for example, it will just ask me to authenticate uh, one time and it will remember me. So it will keep my drive there once I add it. So I don't have to do that every time. And once I connect my drive, I can explore, I find the file I want to share, select it, and share it within, uh, within the post. Very, uh, very useful for collaboration. Um, let's see. Uh, improved site branding. OK, so if you want to change the branding of your site in Excel Platform 6, you can change the logo, but also uh, we made it possible to change your corporate colors easily. Without uh, without code, without CSS, so you can come here and change the primary color, secondary color of the site, and the third color uh, to your corporate colors. 
okay? So you need to be an admin to do this, of course. And uh, there are more things that I haven't shown, uh, things around uh, design and user experience improvements, uh, things around bug fixes, uh, cumulative bug fixes, uh, improvements in performance and security of the, of the platform. Um, and if you want to learn more about this conversion and how to obtain it, just uh, if, you're, if you're already a client, just reach out to your EXO uh, uh, client trap to discuss uh, what this migration might entail, um, if to obtain technical information like that, change law, things like that. Or if you need a dedicated demo, we'll be happy to, to do one for you uh, on this new version 6 uh, release. If you're new to EXO, just uh, contact us uh, from our website, exoplatform.com. And uh, I encourage you to also join our community site uh, as well. If you haven't done so, it should give you a quick look into this new release because it's running on uh, version 6. Just bear in mind that obviously you won't have access to things like the administration features there, but it'll definitely give you a feel for the, uh, the new release. If you want to try Exoplatform version 6 in full, uh, definitely let, let us know. We'll see what we can do. I definitely encourage you to at least give it a try and expose it to some of your end users. Maybe uh, do a sort of a test uh, group and, and uh, let them play with it because we're really, really seeing improvements in the way that people and users interact with Exo Platform with this new release. Um, uh, we're quite happy with it. So, so um, just a quick glance at our roadmap before I answer your questions. Um, so exciting things are on the way. Definitely, uh, the next release will be um, released next uh, next year, first quarter. We don't have a specific date yet. Version 6.1, which will follow the current version, which is not version 6.0, with more features and improvements. And here's a, a sneak peek, uh, just to um, um, to give you a little bit of a teaser. Uh, we have on the way new video calls. Uh, powered by Jitsi, an open source tool that will be integrated, embedded with an extra platform, deployable on-premise, which is always great for many of our clients, supports group calls. That's the, the great advantage of it. The next feature that will be uh, added next year as well, new design for tasks, better looking, more user-friendly, more mobile-friendly, and it will include the new Gaunt uh, display of uh, projects and, and tasks. Um, new agenda feature, which will replace our old calendar feature. And by the way, so, so all these features, like the, the new task design and the new agenda feature, uh, are already demoable. We can already demo them for you. Uh, we're just uh, in the process of testing them. Um, so this will replace the old uh, calendar feature, and it will focus more on providing shared team agendas where people can integrate easily their, they can connect their Outlook and Google calendars within a shared calendar, and everybody will be on the same page within a project or a team in terms of their availabilities and their calendars. So it's no longer a replacement for your Google Calendar or your Outlook Calendar. We want you to keep using those, and instead we're offering you this new feature which will let you build team shared team calendars for better sync up between teams and better visibility of everybody's availability. The next feature we'll add is the external collaboration, the ability to invite individuals, external freelancers or contractors that you want them to access to just one space or to share some document with them without having to you know, set up an account for them and have them see everything. You can just individually invite somebody and they will only see uh, the space that you invite them to or the content that you share with them. So external, this is just to improve and enable uh, collaboration with external members. Uh, when I say external, they could be, of course, external to your organization, like a contractor or temporary, a partner or a client or someone who, that you want to share some stuff with, with an Excel app. Another thing is the, uh, the ability to, for Office 365 users to edit documents directly in uh, Microsoft Office Online. Uh, this is something we're, uh, we're working on as well. We're testing. It's already here. We're just testing it. Um, new design for Excel document management. It will be cleaner, nicer looking, um, more intuitive, more mobile friendly. And a new analytics module. This is something that I'm really looking forward to personally. I don't know about you guys, but uh, this is going to offer a wide range of... Uh, it'll let you build dashboards with... Uh, 
that will be modular and you can uh, trace and uh, measure activity in uh, pretty much all the main areas uh, in the platform, like activity around news, around uh, posting, content, uh, etc. And uh, it will be native to Excel platform. Uh, it's, a, it's already here. Uh, again, we're just going to be testing it and uh, uh, fine tuning and improving it uh, uh, before releasing it. So uh, finally, uh, we're, we're planning on adding. This hasn't. This one hasn't been developed yet, but we plan on adding a system, a bookmarking system, where the user can bookmark objects like documents, posts, articles, pages, spaces, and then be able to access them at any time easily or search within them. And this will include APIs. Uh, all right, so I think that's it for our roadmap. Let me see if there are any questions that I can address before wrapping up for today. Um, oh, we've got a question. Um, can spaces have subspaces? Um, by design, uh, no. So this is, I mean, there, there are two ways to, to address this. Uh, kind of requirement when somebody says, I want to have subspaces uh, to my space. Uh, if what you mean is to have um, a subspace, for example, maybe under the human resources department, there's a project as part of the human resources. And I want to, I want a space for that project, but I want it to be under human resources, uh, parent uh, human resources space. Um, you can can do that um, you can create a space which will be separate from human resources and we can work on a way to display it as being a child of human resources for example we create a, a custom menu that will display human resources as a parent space and uh, under it we will display like a tree with all of the sub spaces of human resources so that's possible so in terms of um, in terms of mere uh, display of spaces Yes, we can we can display spaces and make them look as if they're subspaces, uh, you know. Uh, and when you go to human resources, we can display some links here to all of the subspaces of uh, human resources, so people can come here and they can access uh, the subspaces of human resources. However, in terms of data structure, the the spaces will still be uh, separate. So when you go to um, to the documents area of the human resources. Within the documents area of the parent space and resources, you will not see the content of the subspaces because um, behind the scenes, uh, in terms of data structure uh, and data storage, um, the spaces are entirely separate. Okay, they can share the same users, of course. You can invite the same members. You can display them in a way that seems as though those are the children spaces or sub projects or subspaces under one parent space. That's all feasible um with uh, rather minimal effort but um when dealing with information and data uh, underneath uh, those spaces uh, they will be on but of course luckily you can still push um content and information to spaces uh easily such as a document so if you have like a, a word document that i just uh, created uh you can come here and uh share it to your subspace to push it to your, to your space. Okay, um, so you can move things around fairly easily. Same for uh, wiki nodes and, and so on. Okay, let me see if there are any other questions. Loving the new design. Congrats to the XO team. Uh, thank you very much. That's uh, that's great here. Glad you like it. Will there be the possibility to, in the future to share the screen in web conferencing? Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure whether that's part of it or not. We'll have to check. Uh, maybe uh, contact us um, for that information. Um, and also maybe take a look, keep an eye on our roadmap. Uh, if you want to be informed, uh, you'd have to join our community site and look for the roadmap page. And you can even follow that page if you like. Uh, this one which it's on our community site, community.exopathon.com. And you can see all of the upcoming features, including the web conferencing, um, this one. Um, yeah. So uh, contact us uh, for more information about that. We'll let you know.
Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I just read on a roadmap that screen sharing is going to be provided. So there you go. That answers your question. Um, next question. Uh, you are going to improve document functionality and implement workflow of the document as uh, version 6 release include this feature. As far as I know, the, the um, workflow capability uh, is scheduled as part of the, um, the tasks uh, module of Excel platform, which will be uh, able to manage workflows and to link workflows to documents. So for example, you can create a workflow around the document. So um, it's not really part of the document feature, it's part of the tasks feature, but it's linkable with uh, document workflows. Because we want to create a module that can, create, that can allow you to create workflows around not only documents, but around other things like uh, procurement workflows and any business workflows. So um, I invite you to um, ask your um, Excel rep about the specific roadmap and when the workflow will be uh, included Etc. But personally, I'm also very much looking forward to that because I know uh, it has been requested by uh, uh, some clients. So it's something that we have um, in our eyesight. Next question. Uh, does version six still can use the same theme like in version five? Uh, that depends. Uh, some of the things that you custom made for your uh, version five in terms of theme and, and skin can continue to work in version six, some other things might not uh, continue to work. So this is why we have to um, basically do a test and uh, do a migration um, study for you specifically to see what you want to keep, what you want to improve, what you want to get rid of and replace by improvements in version six, uh, including the theme. Um, and then uh, you can take an informed decision about uh, the upgrade uh, to version six. So it's hard to tell specifically because some things will, will continue to work in version six and version five because the, there are the same variables underneath, the same uh, UI elements that are uh, affected. But if there are new UI elements introduced by version six that are not taken into account in version five and you modify them, uh, things like of that sort, then uh, your changes won't, be, won't uh, work uh, in version six and will need to be uh, redone on version six. Um, keep in mind that today we're, uh, the topic of design and UI adjustment uh, is something that uh, we have a good grasp on. So if you haven't talked to us um, uh, about this topic as of late, uh, feel free to discuss it with us so we can see what we can do specifically for your case to make sure you have the theme, that uh, the ideal theme for your Excel platform sites running on version 6. Uh, we'll be happy to see that happen. So. Next question, do you support collaboration uh, at mention and user notification? Yes, yes, and yes. So for collaboration, we have quite a few um, features that enable team collaboration, such as uh, instant messaging, document collaboration, including real-time document editing by several people with at mentions, with uh, comments, with version history. Um, we provide task management, project management functionality, uh, the ability to create knowledge bases, uh, uh, within spaces, uh, search, notifications, um, at mentions and comments, and uh, document comments, and task comments, and the activity stream, uh, in many areas. So you can mention someone and have them be notified and work together uh, fairly seamlessly, especially with the, uh, the mobile app, the native mobile app that we have. It works great on uh, version 6, so it will enable people who are on the go to be notified, their phone, they will receive push notifications when, for example, you had mentioned them on something important, and they can answer you from their phone even when they're on the go, uh, things like that. So, yeah. Uh, last question I have here Can you embed a video in the news article with an inline player other than YouTube? Uh, yes, uh, we support Vimeo and Daily Motion at the moment. Uh, we also have the ability to attach mp4 videos that you can upload so if you have a video on your computer that's not hosted uh you can still upload it uh, to Excel platform um and uh be able allow your users basically to to play it yes self-hosted videos um specifically mp4 videos the mp4 format but no ability to embed the local MP4 videos uh, in an inline player. 
Uh, I don't think so. Uh, the MP4 videos will go in as an attachment. Let me see. Let me go back to my demo instance to quickly verify this. Um, and I'm pretty sure I wrote an article as part of my demo earlier that included a video. Let's check it out. Here it is. So this is what's going to the way it works right now. So inline player works for Vimeo, Daily Motion, and YouTube. When you just uh, put the link of the video here, but MP4 videos will go as part of your attachments, and when you click here, you can play the video from here. I mean, it's not a huge deal in my personal opinion, but it might be useful to be able to embed it. Um, I'll make sure to take note of this in a form. Uh, I know that I have people from our product management team that are attending this webinar, so they're, they're watching this. Uh, uh, and we'll be sure to take note of this. It, it, I think it would be nice, it would still be nice to be able to Im embed uh, an MP4 video in line as well, not just as part of an attachment. Uh, it's one click away if you click here and, and play it like this, but. Uh, Maybe you wanted to go after a paragraph as part of a, a tutorial or something like that that you're writing and you want it to be uh, within your article itself. That's uh, something for us to consider adding for next iterations. Appreciate your feedback, though. All right. Uh, OK, a uh, couple more questions before we wrap up. Uh, sorry if I missed this information. What are the features specific to knowledge management uh, in EXO uh, version 6? Um, so in terms of knowledge management, we have quite a few features around, uh, first, of all, first of all, file and document management, uh, um, um, news and, and uh, um, communication-oriented uh, knowledge can be managed uh, using the new news application for uh, managing announcements, corporate uh, announcements, articles, things like that. We also have uh, what you used to call a wiki uh, module, which is a full-fledged enterprise wiki. Uh, today in version six, we call it notes. It's the notes uh, application that allows you to manage uh, an, uh, a knowledge base of uh, uh, knowledge articles. So you can create, uh, you can, Publish your uh, meeting notes, your uh, procedures, your uh, internal processes, your uh, any type of uh, information that you would like to store uh, as part of a knowledge library, uh, help resources, tutorials, etc. They can be part of the wiki uh, or what we call today the notes. So in the human resources, we can create uh, like a knowledge base. Uh, of articles and of pages. Oh, I have um, the good news. Uh, the the um, a wiki editor has been upgraded in version six. It's now replaced by a more modern, uh, better looking and uh, better, um, just overall better uh, editor based on the CK editor uh, for writing wiki pages. So I invite you to uh, check it out as well. And we disabled uh, the wiki sent that because it's just confusing users. So. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the wiki is part of the, I would say, is part of the knowledge management. Uh, the search, it's important in the knowledge base or knowledge management system to have a uh, solid uh, search engine. So that's something that uh, uh, that we worked on as well. So uh, I invite you just definitely to uh, reach out to us for more information. Uh, also check out our um, our blog. I know we we did many articles around knowledge management as it pertains to uh, Exo platform. So just me going to exoplatform.com slash blog and doing search for knowledge management pulls up many articles uh, around uh, knowledge management in Exo platform. So check those out as well and uh, reach out to us if you need a demo or if you need to, uh, to try this yourself. Um, I don't think I mentioned everything in terms of knowledge management capabilities, but that gives you the, uh, the big picture. Uh, next question, uh, do you have the possibility to display Power uh, BI Business, uh, yeah, Power BI dashboard in spaces, for example, using HTML, copy paste, or another option. Uh, yes, uh, using iframes, I would say if that's uh, supported by Power BI, BI uh, it should be straightforward to um, display them within a space if they support uh, iframing uh, within external websites. Uh, if, they can, if you can generate, if, if, uh, you know, putting uh, these dashboards in iframes and displaying them in other sites, such as Action is possible, is provided by uh, this tool. 
then uh, it should be easy, it should be straightforward to display it within species. Uh, much appreciated, love your software. Thank you very much. That's, uh, uh, that's great to hear. Um, loving the new design. Uh, that's great to hear as well. Um, yeah, so I think that's it. No more questions. Um, really appreciate your time and your interest, uh, everyone. Uh, thank you for um, attending this, this webinar. Um, please look forward to uh, upcoming uh, announcements about uh, about Texo Platform. We have uh, quite a few things that uh, we're working on, uh, as you saw. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, I'll just... Uh, let me just uh, wish you uh, a great afternoon or a great uh, uh, day, depending on where you are, and uh, hope to uh, talk to you again very soon. Thanks, everybody.